Yo, hello and welcome back to the Watch Cookie YouTube channel and uh, another weekly instalment of Time to Unwind. Did we miss last week? Yeah. Yeah, we, we might have missed last week, but we'll roll with it anyway. So we've recently went to a um, an auction in Birmingham, so quite local to us. It's a, a fellow's watch auction. So we went there to basically see the watches and have a bit of press coverage of it so we could write some articles on kind of our experience and we thought for this week we'd sit down and discuss some of our favourite watches that we saw there. So we've each written down um, three different picks of like our top picks from the, the event. Mm -hmm. So three, three watches that are our personal favourites um, and then we've also put down three watches that we think the other person has guessed. So preemptively I've got you know, my three watches and then what I think his will be and then at the end we can compare and see if we've guessed correctly. Which I will have. So. I also will have, obviously. Time to unwind. Unwind okay. to one time. Crack the open, baby. Okay, so I thought we could start off by um, going through a bit of a background about what the Fellows Auction actually is. So mm -hmm. I think you came across them you first. Yeah, yeah. So I was um, talking to some of the guys at Red Bar uh, for the get together we went to last last month um, and they were telling me about a similar sort of get together that happens in London called Time for a Pint right. um, which I kind of then did more research into and found out the guy who does like podcasts and stuff and it's not just like a get together um, and on one of the podcasts they were talking about where they work with fellows to like create some like top trumps right. um, so I was like oh that's cool we'll sign, send off for those and see what they're like um, and yeah in in that they obviously included some of the upcoming auctions um, and yeah, there was, there's it happening in Birmingham, so like that's just up the road from us. Um, so yeah, we went along. It was in the uh, jewelry quarters of Birmingham, which I don't think many people know. I think it, people know it's there, but they don't think they realise maybe quite the history and yeah, yeah, just yeah, how big it, it was really. It actually is, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we got to talk to the guys at Fellows. There's a guy called Liam there who met us as well. Um, I kind of showed us the room and yeah, just let us have a go with all the watches. Really, my <laughs> first pick was the AP Royal Oak. So it's 36 mil Royal Oak with the um, the power reserve indicator, the date, and the second time zone. Yeah. So yeah, um, I think that was quite a surprising one for me because I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. So I've tried on the 37 mil Royal Oaks before, um, as discussed previously in in one of the Red Bar events, mm -hmm. um, and I felt that that was a pretty good size, and you know it's quite different to the 41 mil Royal Oak. I yeah. think it's got its, it's definitely got its own kind of personality to it because the 41 mil is. It's quite big. It's quite quite an aggressive think, piece yeah. because of all the angles and stuff. But mm. um, as soon as you know you shave a few mil off the case size, it suddenly becomes quite elegant. And you know the the wrapping around your wrist and stuff. It all, I think it really comes into its own, especially for mm. me having a smaller wrist. You know, relatively good condition. The brushing was really nice. Everything you'd expect from a Royal Oak. You know, really sharp angles and just the really nice blue doll. Yeah, I did like the blue. Really set it off. I think you know the blue is very. Sort after and popular, and it, yeah. it goes with the, the stainless steel just really well. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Did you see the watch? I did. Yeah. Uh, it was too small for me. I think. Okay. So how much did it end up going for? So it went for seven thousand two hundred and seventy-three pounds. You know that that seems like a really good price to me, mm. considering the Royal Oak family. You know, if it was a forty-one mil, or you know one of the jumbo models or something, you know, you'd be talking double that. Or if you had a one if, in front of it, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, so my first one was the Amiga Seamaster, the three hundred, right, yeah. the big triangle version. Um, so if you know much about the Amigas um, or the Seamasters especially there, it's a, it's a bit of a greyer watch. Yeah. Um, I don't think they come up that often. Um, but yeah, it is uh, slightly larger. I think it's about 41mm um, right. and it's, it has a very like military aesthetic. Um, simple, it's the 369 dial. Um, you've obviously got the big triangle at 12 and you've got like the like, rugged like sword hands and stuff um, and also it wasn't just the big triangle that was larger I think the indices were as well so yeah. it seemed larger and wider so for you know it, it just brought the dial in nicely legible um, as a to what should be you know if it was being used as a military watch you mm. want to know that you can read the time in you know when, yeah. you, when you need to read it and it mm. needs to be quick and legible and, and for ten thousand three hundred pounds it's um I, I think for the model it's quite a good price, but yeah, for, what it, for what it is, it's, it's, um, it's on quite paper, a lot. It's yeah, it's a quite lot. a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's a grail for quite a lot of people, people, for Amiga yeah. fans, so you know, I think that price is only going to increase yeah. really. So. so I thought it was too big, basically okay. the, the opposite of what you, what you thought last time. Um, so, you know, 
I can appreciate it for what it is. It's definitely characterful, and I like the, mm-hmm. the small details that really bring the tool watchness alive. It was in really good condition, so the, the polishing looked really nice. Yeah, and, you know, everything of Amiga that you would expect with the sharp brushing against the, you know, really crisp polishing and mm-hmm. stuff. It, it looked really good. So my second choice would be the Theo Fabergé um, Tourbillon. Mm-hmm. So they had an 18 karat gold. Um, a limited edition, I think one of 25 pieces. I think it was um, number five as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, number was five of the Torbjorn wristwatch, which had a, um, a date as well. And yeah, I just thought it was really cool, basically. Um, I'm a sucker for like the kind of breadway, um, silver, guilloche, dull style. And this one was one of the best I've ever seen executed. Okay. You know, I've seen some breadways in my time and, you know, they're really nice. They're really consistent and they are what they are. But for this one, they just did a really good job of having a very, very pronounced engine turn gear shape and as soon as you pick up the watch, it's like you're looking into the gear shape and then you've got like the tourbillon with the, the opening through it that just had such a pronounced yeah. depth to it and I think it had a double step bezel as well and it was just, you know, really characterful and vintage but it was somewhere in between like 38 and 40 mil. Yeah, well it looked <laughs> um, good on wrist, I remember really cool. admiring it from a distance on your wrist and it looks Yeah, I think cool. it, it looks best on wrist. Yeah. I think the design is not verging on weird but it's, it's very different, it's quite unique and until you really put it on your wrist it's hard to make sense of how that looks mm. but just because of the quality of the execution it brings it into its own, you know, if it was a stamped doll or something it definitely wouldn't have been as impressive mm. as it was then, so yeah, Fair just enough. really cool and quite rare, you know, I've never seen it before, I've never heard of it. Yeah, um, about 25. Yeah, so what did you think of it? Um, I did like it, I wasn't naturally drawn to it. Realised at oh, yeah. 21,692. So my next one was the Submariner, Redux Submariner 5513. Okay. So it was a one no date vintage sub from, well the 5513 I think it ran from like the 60s to the 80s I think. All right. um, so I couldn't find the exact year of this one but it had a really nice like patinaed blue bezel. Um, mm. The condition in general actually was, was really good. Um, it wasn't like too much actually the bezel, it just had a nice, I suppose saying it blue was probably too much, it had like a, a light black fade. Right. Um, so it was probably quite a good time if you want, if you're yeah. in the market for that sort of watch to like two goes pick it up. Did. Yeah, but and kind of add your own. Ready for a new wearer. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so yeah, condition wise it's nice, the loom was a nice even colour throughout. Right. Um, again, similar to the bezel, it's what you'd, what you'd want, um, you can kind of add your own to it. Uh, I, I per- obviously I've personally gone for a date sub, but in the vintage models, I think the no date are just so much better. Yeah, I think they're more definitely. accurate to, you know, the original. Um, I just think they look better. I think the symmetry. I think it's really, just like, really it. like cool. Everything about that watch yeah. is just you know vintage. And cool, yeah, and I think the thing is, if you're picking up that watch, the likelihood is you've probably got a lot of other watches. So you've probably yeah. got a watch you can wear every day. Which, if a date is essential, you'd have that. But the five five one three with with yeah, the no so date. You bring it on the weekend. Yeah, or something. It doesn't you matter just, what the date yeah. is. It just you just wear it. Um, so yeah, it's probably a bit of a predictable one for me. Extremely predictable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that one um, went for sixteen k, or nearly sixteen k. Which again, similar with the Amiga, for what it is, um, just essentially a tool watch that's time only. It's, yeah, yeah. it's a lot. But I think for the 5513, that is a reference which has increased quite a lot in price at the moment. Yeah, it's such um, a hot item right now with yeah. you know, the whole vintage project exploding and then with it being Rolex. Um, anyway, what was your last okay, so choice? My last choice was the Frank Mueller um, Endurance GT Chronograph. Okay. So, for some reason it wasn't mentioned on the fellows page, I think, but it was a, a split seconds chronograph. Mm-hmm. So I didn't realise this before um, I picked it up. But that's actually the first time I've ever been brave enough to try out the split seconds on, on a split <laughs> seconds chronograph. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a, a good flex experience and I, I really like split seconds chronographs. There's just... Oh, well, I agree. I think it was it was a really cool watch. I, I like... I mean, the thing is that it's just a party trick, isn't it? The fact you've got the the split second and yeah. it's... It, no sure one else... someone could use it, but not us. Oh yeah, I'm sure they could, but your man in the street wouldn't care. They wouldn't even know what it is. It's just when you're yeah. around other watch people and you're at a get together or something and yeah. you just... It. yeah. <laughs> It's just something that yeah no one else would understand, but watch people go crazy over. Um, so yeah, I think it's a really interesting piece. It went for four thousand and eighty-three pounds. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what those tend to go for. I know that Frank Mueller had kind of a bad reputation at the start for um, oh, okay. like the after 
customer care, like after you bought the watch, people mm-hmm. having problems with servicing and, and, and different things. So I'm not sure if they're still kind of looked down upon. So my last one was the uh, Amiga Speedmaster Reduced. So I've written about this before briefly, um, and I've always thought it was quite a good investment. Um, if you are either looking to get into the luxury market or maybe you just want a piece that in a few years will potentially be worth a few more, which I still right. think it will be. Um, but yeah, for is a, I think it's a, there's a bit of question marks over the size. It's either 38 or 39 mil. I've heard different reports from different people. Um, but yeah, I I was actually a little bit underwhelmed with it in person. I was um, extremely underwhelmed. <laughs> I think, well, the, the full size Speedmaster is, is it 40, 42? 42. Yeah. yeah it's a modern one. Yeah, and that wears, I don't know, like a 39. Um, so I think when you've got a 38 mil reduced, it wore wars. It looked weird. Yeah. Because of the positioning of the subdials, just because I'm well, pretty yeah. sure they just use the same movement. So it just meant I that the subdials on that dial appeared really far out. It, it ended up selling, going for £1,200, which oh, right. <laughs> which for you know a, a Speedmaster, yeah. it's a watch with so much like heritage and like, prestige and it's so much interesting stories behind it that you know you can get something which is pretty much mm. the same, it's automatic as well, Yeah. for less than half you can get a retail one. Do you want to reveal? If what you, I thought you'd what, put. What do you, yeah. Okay. So my first guess was the AP. Okay. I thought you'd go for that. Um, <laughs> I th- I thought the second one would be the Torbjorn. Okay. So I'm happy I got that. Annoyingly, I thought I had this. Uh, I put the Speak Marion one we saw. I thought you would. That yeah, would have I been thought your that would have been one of my favourites. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll show a picture of that as well. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure that was a 42 mil one, and I'm. More of a fan of their 38 mil ones, just because it's quite big. Why do I? <laughs> and the lugs that. are massive. And it, yeah, it, it was cool. But <clears> I put it on my wrist, and I was like, mm. no, okay. not for me. All right. Too big. So but two out of yeah. three. Okay. Yeah, Go on, so, then. so I guessed the big triangle Seamaster 300, yep. the 5513, yep. and I guessed the vintage Speedmaster, which was the nice one, the 40 mil one. That oh went for like yeah, 10 grand. That. Whatever reference that is, we'll include a picture. Yeah. That was. Really cool, and that was, was even though it's not necessarily my thing that I would necessarily go for, I still think that was one of the coolest watches there. Two out of three, it's not bad. We even kind of know each other. Yeah, that's kind good. Of know each other. It's not bad. Okay, so thank you for watching me and Ben obviously talking through some of our favourite watches we saw at the recent Fellows auction. Uh, we will leave a link down below if you want to have a look at yourself and have a look at some of the others. Um, we do have plans for quite a few articles coming out as well on these watches, yeah. so if you do want to see them in more detail and kind of hear our thoughts. You know, rather than just first impressions, um, stay tuned to the blog website, which we'll leave in the link below. So yeah, definitely, and let us know what you thought of our our choices. If they were good, if they were in line with what you would have picked. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to include some other pictures um, of the watches that we've we've seen. So maybe you can make your own picks. And yeah, let us know. Yeah. And we'll see you in the next video.